let's talk about climate change because climate change is something that yanayojiri mm-hmm. yeah, it's happening now as we speak mm-hmm. and um, we of course know that there was the glasgow meeting of the cop 26 where world leaders um, you know private sector civil society groups gathered to look at the progress that's been made uh, with regards to climate talks they ended up with some hammered out deal and uh, civil society organizations some of them are saying they're happy others are saying they're not happy but then the impact is what we want to discuss today the impact of covid and uh, not covid of climate the climate crisis in on kenya and on kenyan counties somebody who was there in uh, glasgow attending the cop26 talks and who is also a very very uh, well renowned expert on these matters is the governor of Vihiga County his excellency dr wilberforce otichilo hasilo the current governor of Vihiga he joins us on the line good morning governor good morning it's good to have you on the show thank you very much for joining us welcome to the situation room thank you for offering me this opportunity to be able to talk on the issue will be global we'll be talking about this um with, uh, with the view that the council of governors is organizing the devolution conference next week in makueni and the theme this year is also centered around the issues of climate climate impact and climate change but let's just begin by just getting to understand the governor otichilo for many people who don't know him governor of otichilo is uh, somebody who has studied these matters at a great extent He has a doctorate in natural resource management and space science. Governor, what is a doctorate in natural resource management and space science? What's that all about? Well, uh, that's all about uh, understanding how our mother nature planet operates, uh, the systems that make the planet uh, habitable, and uh, the space science is about uh, uh studying on how how the earth functions from outer space because if you want to understand how the planet earth uh, operates you must be out of the planet so therefore you must be outside and that's why why you have space science looking at the universe looking at the planet earth from outside the planet itself okay You know it's interesting uh, when you say this it's it's when one talks about understanding the earth <laughs> from a simple layman's terms i would assume if if i live on the earth i understand it <laughs> if so you would be able to understand it because you would not see how the whole in the whole picture of how the planet is uh, is uh, the structure and how it functions you must be outside out, out of it I think that's the beauty of then having someone like you as an expert because the this thing that we consider to be common and which we consider to be obvious is then broken down so that we understand it in its entirety you understand its complex nature you understand how you relate to it you understand how others have related to it and you understand the direction in which it is going I agree yeah. completely it, it, it's just that ignorance is what sometimes leads one to make quick assumptions about things you know very little about and i am one of those people who had made a quick assumption about a subject matter that i actually know next to nothing about and i am glad that we have you in the studio to open up this discussion and also help our audience and some of the people who are as ignorant as i to actually <laughs> understand what this thing is really all about i'm happy i'm here Yes. Uh, for example let me tell you when we were in school we were told uh, the sky is the limit and yes. i tell you that so that's why you are Einstein but there's no sky <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an interesting conversation the sky is the limit but you know what eh? there's no sky <laughs> so basically there's no limit right <laughs> there's there's no limit basically to a- anything that you you are doing and what you're talking about mm. we have with us in the studio i mean not, not in the studio but uh, joining us by video call governor wilber otichilo from vihiga county talking about climate and climate change and and the impact of climate change on us as a people so a city what, what what do you what do you suppose um the 
you know, just the way you call yourself a layman. And I'm a layman. And so, let me, uh, from, from your side, yes. what are the, these impacts of climate change on you as a person? You see, what I and found puzzling, mm -hmm. uh, I, I realized that I was ignorant and I decided to read a little bit about it. Huh? And uh, why it concerned me is because of where I come from. I come from a place called the Kano Plains. And one of the things that is common about those plains is that they get flooded literally, literally every single year. They're not the only place that get flooded. Budalangi also have their fair share. But then there's something that I was later to learn was called a backflow, okay? Where it isn't just a question of flooding, my friend. It is super flooding. So that water just moves from where it was right inland to the point where it is water. As I say, when they say water, water everywhere, it's literally water, water everywhere. Mm. But it, my mind went back to a time when I was still a student at the university and I'd gone visiting Naivasha. And I was very uh, surprised to find that one of the places we visited had houses that seemed to have submerged in the water. I don't know how strange it seems, but you're looking at a house and you can see the roof. And you're wondering, why is this submerged? Now, the owner of that particular property took the time to explain to us how the lake had moved. Now, up to that point, I didn't know that the lake could move. And it was a very strange thing, and yet it was a reality. So, with the time, when you start seeing things that defy what you can actually see with your very eyes, and you seek an explanation, and then later on, someone explains to you that this is something that is being caused by what you call climate change, you then have to take a greater interest. Then you hear that, oh, ice caps are melting. Yes. Oh, then you hear water levels around the world are increasing. Then you hear, oh... It's getting hotter. Some even tell you the sun is moving closer. So you wonder, is the earth moving closer to the, uh, the sun? Or is the sun moving closer? To... All these questions mm. now become a matter of concern. Now, these issues that were told were occurrences once every, God knows, 50 years, 48 years, 70 years. When the frequency becomes more, as a layman, it now becomes alarming. And then mm. that is when I have to ask those who understand it better. The experts. Please explain what is actually happening. Governor. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, first, I want to uh, note that, you know, under normal circumstances of the planet, the climate will change, but the variability, the changes are insignificant. They are not all that uh, magnificent, uh, are big enough to be seen. But since the start of the Industrial Revolution, that is early in the uh, in the uh, 70s, uh, uh, in the 1700s onwards, we had that this industrial revolution, uh, revolution where we had the discovery of the coal, the discovery of uh, oil, fuel, and then we started this all this uh, the invent in, invention of the train and all this. Stuff. Mm -hmm. So we started emitting so much carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide into the atmosphere. And as that carbon dioxide has been building up, then the, as, as the carbon gets into the atmosphere, it forms a layer, and that's what is called a, a greenhouse. I'm sure you know what, how, you have seen a greenhouse, a normal greenhouse here yes. where people plant. Yes. In this greenhouse, you know, the purpose is once you put there, the temperatures, once you enter into the greenhouse, you feel it's very hot. Yep. Isn't that the case? It yes, is the case. case. Yeah, because you see, as the, the heat from the sun gets into the greenhouse, it is retained there, and the, the, the tablet that uh, forms the greenhouse forms and uh, makes it harder for the heat to go back. Mm. And that's what ha has happened over years. As the carbon dioxide has gone into the atmosphere, it is formed a, a layer, and this layer has uh, become now impervious, whereby as sun rays go through it to the planet, uh, to the Earth's surface, when it's uh, reflected back, it does not go through to go into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Earth has start, uh, started warming up, and it's continuing to warm up, because as human beings, we have continued uh, to emit more carbon dioxide and particularly when the population of human beings on the planet started increasing mm. we started occupying more areas we started clearing our forests 
our riverine areas and therefore as we cleared most of the carbon is stored in plants if you remember the process of photosynthesis yep. mm-hmm. how photosynthesis is done mm. in, in, in carbon dioxide is the main ingredient of photosynthesis so most of the carbon dioxide the trees absorb carbon dioxide as part of the photosynthesis to form the carbon so all these trees you see around here is all carbon dioxide stored mm-hmm. in them so they are known as the best carbon sinks they store carbon dioxide now you see uh, what we human beings have done mm-hmm. we have cut all the or most of the forest and as we have cut all the forest and we burn them. You know, most of our people, when we go to cut the forest, you go with a panga and an axe yeah. and, a, and a matchbox. <laughs> so after you do, you cut, afterwards you put on fire. And when you burn, then the oxygen, the carbon dioxide goes in the atmosphere. Mm. And as it goes in the atmosphere, it accumulates and forms that greenhouse layer, which, form, which makes it difficult for the heat from the sun to go back to the atmosphere. And that's why the, the earth is warming up and unless we stop uh, deforestation, mm. then we are putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Unless we stop, now you see the vehicles have increased and they all are producing carbon dioxide. Industries are producing carbon dioxide in the manufacture of various products. All this carbon dioxide is going in the atmosphere. And that's why the world is warming up very fast. And as the warming up of the, uh, of the planet has many consequences. Mm. When the t- temperatures increase, first of all, it is destabilizes the what is called hydrological process, the process on how the the the, the, the systems of the of the planet work in terms of, of evaporation. I remember you you learned in school that you know uh, when when the sun comes up, the, there is evaporation, water evaporates from the ground, yep. rose in the atmosphere. And then it condenses, and then it, ra- com- uh, it comes back as rain. Yes. I'm sure that's what we are taught in primary school. Yes. So now all those processes are destabilized because of the temperatures. And that's now what is making uh, life on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the planet very different. And you, you learned about the you know, wind supply uh, uh, blowing from a, a, a low, uh, low pressure to a high pressure level. Mm. Now, when the temperatures uh, uh, change, the pressures on the globe change, and therefore the climate now changes. The winds will change. They don't flow in the same direction at the same time. So it, uh, it organizes the normal functioning of the planet the way God uh, has structured it to perform. Governor, to, uh, to I've, I've got to ask the question then at this point. Is yes. the impact of the greenhouse gas emission universal around the globe, or there are there some parts of the world that are? No, it is universal. You see what you are seeing now. Mm. What do we see? That's why I told you to understand the, what goes on in the planet. You must be out of the planet, mm. and that's why you know you see the planet. You see where you are. You don't know that since morning you have gone thousands of kilometers. You, you have you, the, the earth has been going very fast, mm. and and therefore you, 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 the earth is, is is a body which is on its own and is rotating around the the, the sun. Mm. So it is in constant motion, and therefore it uh, climate change affects the entire globe uniformly. Not uniformly. It uh, in the equator it affects more because. At the equator, we are more exposed to sunlight mm. than the people in the Arctic and, and in the polar areas. So that's why climate change has a major impact on the countries in the tropics, particularly Africa. That's why its impact is felt very, very significantly. And that is a good point because we'll take a break at this point. When we come back now, we begin from the impact of climate change on the African continent, on countries around Africa, and especially for us as Kenya. And then yeah. we look at what the discussions were, what our Kenyan delegation was going seeking in Glasgow, what you achieved from Glasgow, and what we then need to see in coming years. Having uh, a conversation on climate change with the governor of Vihiga County, Dr. Wilbur Otichila. He's an expert on these matters, of space matters, and understanding climate and climate change. So the devolution uh, council is uh, 
organizing the devolution conference. This is a council of governors is organizing the devolution conference that's taking place in Makueni next week. And this is part of the conversations that we want to have and we will be having in the whole week of uh, next week. This morning, we are talking about climate, climate change and what's happening. He was in Glasgow attending the COP26 talks. Just before we went to the break, Governor, you were telling us, yes, the impact of climate change is being felt mostly around the equator. We are on the equator. So obviously what we are seeing in the country is causing a lot, a lot of uh, change being caused by climate change. Now, the question on many people's lips is when our delegations went to Glasgow, for example, what is it that we hoped to achieve and did we achieve what we hoped to achieve? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, yes, as a country, we had a very strong uh, delegation to Glasgow. Uh, the, the, the delegation was uh, uh, headed by the, His Excellency, the President, who was with us. Uh, after two days, he left, and the delegation was uh, led by the, mini, the, the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, we had also a number of PSAs and the Cabinet Secretaries who, are, who, who attended. Uh, our purpose of going to uh, Glasgow was to put our case that uh, climate change is real having a major impact on our country as in many other countries and as i said earlier the climate change is uh, affecting the entire planet so as a, a global community we went there uh, to see how best did we deal with this pandemic because it's a pandemic that we cannot say one country can deal with it. Whether you are developed or not developed, we are all in it. And uh, the consequences are, go are, are affecting us despite of whether you contributed to the, to the warming of the, or the continuing warming of the earth or not. As, as we already know, most of the warming has been caused by the developed countries, the Western countries, the Americas, the Europe, and currently now, China is one of the biggest uh, countries uh, that uh, emits a lot of carbon dioxide. Mm. So we wanted to come together and see how best we can deal with this pandemic. And the main area of our interest is how do we raise resources to be able to uh, contain or stop further emissions, uh, what is normally known as Medication. Mm. How do you, how do we deal with uh, the issue of emission so that we minimize the more uh, carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere? But more importantly, carbon, uh, climate change is here with that. And even if we do everything uh, possible to minimize the, the emission of carbon dioxide, the te uh, temperatures are going to remain for quite a long time. Mm. So how do we adapt? How do you adapt to climate? It's like things have changed. So you must, you must learn on how to live with a new environment. So climate change has actually brought a new environment to us. So how do we adapt to live with it? So that's what we went uh, to discuss with the other countries in the, in, uh, of the planet. And I can say that we had a, a long discussion. Mm. And, um, there were agreements in certain areas and there were also not uh, agreement in certain areas but overall the uh, the spirit was that it is important that as the uh, the community the, uh, the world community we must deal with this pandemic and all of us are in it and we must find a solution so that one was the, uh, a common consensus mm. and all heads of the all heads of the countries that came to give their speeches they all acknowledged that Climate change is a pandemic, and if we do not address it, it is, has ma major consequences that are likely even to destroy this planet. You know, we have always been told in the, in the, you know, when we go to church that, you know, there will be fire, which and is going to destroy people. Yeah, but now we are seeing the fire actually is already on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's not in hell already. We are already, the fire is already on the planet. So probably what we were being told in the Bible already is already coming to, to happen. So it's a prophecy so coming to are, pass. 
Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's coming to pass. But so, uh, what we are there, we, we, we want to make sure. How do we stop this fire? Because if it comes hot, yeah. it is going to burn the planet. And when the planet is burnt, then there will be no life. Governor, you know, the, the, the spirit other. aside, Governor, you know, everybody went there. There was a spirit. There was consensus that, yes, this is happening and we need to do something. And everybody, we have seen all the other cops, people make commitments. And among the things that was ra being raised even in this particular commitment in uh, conference is previous commitments have not been realized. And we are here to make more commitments as a yeah. country. We are bearing the brunt of climate change without having contributed significantly to climate change. Right. Now, from what we see happening in all the conversations is that we also need to do something to stop the you know, rapid increase of global warming. But those that are doing it are just making commitments on lip service and we are bearing the brunt. Did we come home with anything that's going to help us uh, adapt, like you said, to the impact yes, of I climate change? Yes, we... Yes, I can say we came home with at least knowledge. And uh, you know, knowledge is very important. Mm. Uh, people suffer because of lack of knowledge. Our interaction with the, the, the global community in Glasgow for two weeks, we were able to get exposed to various information and knowledge mm. of what is going on. We were able to learn from various countries who are trying to uh, uh, fight this pandemic what best practices they are doing to be able to deal with this pandemic so i can say uh overall we came back with more knowledge uh with better practices that we can now implement ourselves what are those practices have, you know the better practices for example we we have countries which have now decided that the best way to go uh, to deal with the uh, uh, this uh, climate change is to minimize carbon dioxide uh, emissions, and they have now moved away. From, they are moving away from fossil energy using coal and petroleum products as as uh, petroleum as part as, as the main energy. And mm. people now are going to solar energy, or they are going to uh, hydro. Mm. So now we are uh, most countries are moving very fast from uh, fossil energy to renewable energy. Luckily enough, Kenya, we have done extremely well. In fact, Kenya is one of the countries who have done extremely well in renewable energy. In fact, when you look at our energy mix in this country, more than 90% of our energy mix is actually from uh, renewable energy. Mm. Uh, geothermal, uh, we have hydro, and now we are moving very fast in, in solar. So I can say we, 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 we have learned quite a lot at Part of those uh, brushes. We have now countries which are doing smart agriculture, which is now being uh, practiced to deal with the changing uh, climate, the changing weather, how now they go, uh, we go in, into what they are calling conservation agriculture, where you don't have not, not to till the land, but you can still plant crops without tilling the land. So there, well, there are many practices we were able to see. But finally, I can say that as a country, we came out very strong mm -hmm. in terms of adaptation how we would want to uh, get adapted to the changing climate and uh, before we went to uh, glasgow we have we had engaged ourselves with the world bank the last uh, before we went to glasgow we were in madrid in 2019 mm -hmm. and in, in madrid we engaged the world bank so that they could we, we come up with a funding that will help us do uh, um, activities on adaptation and I'm happy that during a uh, Glasgow me uh, meeting we were able to finalize our project agreement with the World Bank and they have now committed to give Kenya 150 million dollars to start with uh, to go into uh, climate change adaptation programs which will be focused at the county level mm. and not only at the county level it will be moved to the world level so we already have uh, now a commitment of uh, over 150 million dollars which is going to come to this country actually even if we saw yesterday in the papers advertisement of the people uh especially who will be running this project who are already put in the papers yesterday. how soon so will the, say, how soon will the money arrive and for how long 
Actually, the Monday and the Monday will be arriving any time before by early next month. Mm. We will start by receiving about a uh, hundred thousand dollars for every county. We are forty-seven, uh, and these hundred thousand dollars will be for preparation. Mm. You know, we have to prepare. We we'll have to form committees at the ward level, and then the, we have capacity building. Then after that is done, the, at the ward level, the, each each of the ward will be coming up with the projects that are relevant to their own world in terms of how to adapt to climate change and how to mitigate climate change at the world level. And the programs that are, they are likely to be funding will be programs like dealing with the conservation of water because climate change is causing a lot of um, uh, scarcity in water, uh, harvesting of water from roofs and so on, um, the, the issue of um, having um, uh, organic farming or smart agriculture, the issue of um, uh, afforestation or putting uh, uh, reclaiming the areas that have been deforested. Mm. So the counties will be able to do those. And we believe that is going to be the best way to take uh, climate change to the grassroots, to the community, where the, the impact is being felt. So do you think $150 million and the programs that the governor is talking about are going to be impactful? They can, but what is $100,000? Uh, uh, $150 million. Yes, million, yes, but you... you no, no, it, no, 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 let me put it clear. Mm. The whole amount is $150 million. Uh, uh, dollars. Mm. If you change in the Kenya shillings, it's about $16 billion. Yes. And then this money is, will be available for about uh, three, uh, three to four years. Mm. But to start the program, you know, you, you, uh, the counties must have a preparation. Yep. So uh, this money, the hundred thousand dollars, which is actually ten million, to be to put to be a rough estimate, is ten million mm. per, war, per per county, is to be used now to uh, build the capacity of our people at the local level. We'll form the what we call World Climate Change Planning uh, Committees at the world level. Then we'll also have county plan, uh, climate change uh, uh, committees at the county level. So uh, once these committees are formed, there will be capacity building. They will have to be taken into what is climate change, how is it affecting their own areas, their own localities. Mm. Then after that, they will then go through the process. How do they select projects of their own interest at their own locality? which then will be funded. Once they come up with a project proposal, then the project proposal will be taken now to the uh, to that national uh, coordinating committee, which will be domiciled in the Treasury, mm. who will then be releasing money according to the projects each of the county will have submitted. And but, then the, the, the monitoring and evaluation. Governor, there are those that have argued that 16 billion shillings over four years um, being given to a people who are being impacted by climate change on a daily basis. We have severe flooding. We have uh, the kind of droughts that we are Drought. facing. All these things yeah. are severe. Being given this amount by countries that are continuing to do the practices that they're practicing and just reducing by you know small percentages their own practices, while we accept the 16 billion shillings, for example, we're also committing that we shall not for example, start a coal power plant in Lamu. We are committing that we shall not look at other sources of energy. We shall just continue looking at our drying rivers as our sources of energy and our solar and wind, which you don't have the, the, the technology as our sources of energy. Don't you think this is just being given a small pittance by somebody who is causing you problems and telling you, use that 16 billion shillings to survive, yet their economies, 16 billion shillings they generate in a day, Yes, that has been one of the, the most difficult issues uh, uh, in all these uh, uh, co uh, uh, co uh, conferences that I've attended. The developed countries who have caused this problem of climate change have been uh, adamant. They have said that they want to support the developing countries. But when it comes to releasing the money, for example, in 2019, uh, uh, in 2009, when we were in Copenhagen, mm. But the developed countries committed that they will be releasing a hundred billion dollars every year to countries uh, that are most affected so that they can be able to uh, adapt to the changing climate but they have not released 
So yes, the developed countries have not been sincere and honest in the commitment, uh, but the issue here is that the, the climate change is continuing and it's impacting most on us, the developing countries. So we cannot just not sit and say, okay, we are waiting for the people who caused us the, break, the problem. You know, we have to find a solution. And that's why we as counties, uh, through the Council of Governance, we have agreed that uh, we have to come up with a, a climate change uh, legislation and the and policy so that within our own uh, budgeting process, we uh, we allocate money for climate change so that the climate change becomes part and parcel of our programs because climate change is cut cross uh, uh, is a cut crossing issue mm. it cuts across all the uh, sectors of our economy and therefore we have felt that we must put climate change as part and parcel of our budgeting process so that we can generate our own money and be able to put in the system so that we, we solve the problem as we await any other bilateral or multilateral multilateral uh, donors or partners who can come and help us. Uh, Governor, there are those who've argued that if you look at the traditional way in which, for instance, we farmed, the traditional ways in which we went about the business of <clears throat> living uh, with the environment in which we find ourselves, that it was the most eco-friendly way of going about the business of simply living on this planet. But with modernization, we've changed. Now, correct. Uh, you're in agreement. <laughs> I'm in agreement. I'm 100% in agreement. Yes. Now, w when it comes to talking about, when you're talking about uh, some of the changes that we can bring about, like organic farming, again, if you look at our traditional ways of farming, it was organic. I, 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 that's what we did. So we moved away from what we did, which essentially is what we are now being told to move back to in many, many ways. Now, let me ask the question. You've clearly stated that many counties don't have a legal framework from within which they can implement some of the things that you require. But let me ask, when we talk about training, sensitizing, teaching, getting our people to understand what needs to be done. Yes. Even if we don't have external sources, what is it that hinders us from actually ensuring that, for instance, one, our people have food security, that they are able to be secure in food production so that somebody can actually feed themselves? Because if you can feed yourself, then these are the issues we keep talking about. Become easier to discuss because at least you're guaranteed a meal. But if even that isn't guaranteed, every other discussion now becomes esoteric. Now, we accept that the climate change that we are experiencing has more or less been brought upon us because other people have interfered with uh, uh, the ecosystem of this planet and we are bearing the brunt of it. Again, but I'm asking the question, with the resources that we have, are we saying we cannot come up with technology and ways in which we can mitigate and ensure that we are able to survive even as we think or wait for these external sources? I agree with you uh, in, in, uh, in total because um, we have the capacity to be able uh, to mitigate some of these um, uh, 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 some of these uh, changes that are brought about by climate change. What is not, what is important is that uh, we have not put a lot of emphasis on our agriculture or food production. We have the right policies, we have the legislation, but when it comes to implementation, we have not implemented them. And that's why we see that uh, we still are not producing enough food for ourselves. And where we produce enough, we are not, we don't have distribution mechanisms so that the, where we have excess production of food, mm. we, this food can be taken to areas where there is less production. Mm. For example, in the Western region, we, we produce a lot of maize and a lot of, but in the Northeastern people are suffering now. Yep. But in this area, we have, a, we have quite a lot of excess food. So I agree with you that it's, it is our planning mechanism that has failed. And we, over years, very little emphasis has been 
given on agriculture. We talk so much about agriculture. We talk about agribusiness and so on. But actually, we are not implementing what actually we are talking about. So, yes, the challenge is with us. And despite of the climate change and despite of um, this issue of wanting to be supported, we can do most of these things ourselves. And the development partners can only complement uh, for us to move forward. Mushmiwa, as a member of parliament, one of the things I heard about you was that you're one of those few politicians who did not give handouts. I still don't give a handout even yes. now. I, I say this because <laughs> it, I've said it in this, uh, this station many times and I've mentioned your name not having met you because I thought that was one of the most wonderful things I'd ever heard for a simple reason. When you take people's minds away from something that they have become accustomed to and which in, in, in essence is retrogressive, you then enable their minds to be able to accommodate changes that would help them. But this yes. now is my question. How willing and receptive are people to change? You've been in leadership at the level of a member of parliament and now as a governor. And there's always this talk about implementation of things. But I want to ask the question. Are people receptive enough to the changes that are introduced in order to change their lives? People could be, uh, would be willing and receptive to change, hmm. but it depends on the leadership. If the leadership and the, the leadership is not focused and uh, drive or direct the people to do what is the right thing to do, then you find that as much as the people are willing to change, and the leadership is not willing to drive or take people in the right direction, then people will follow the leaders on what they are doing. And I think that's why, I, in my own um, opinion, I feel that our leadership has no real focus on the issues. Mm. We have tended to only to deal with the issues that are of no consequence. But the issues that have impact to our lives, we tend to treat them very uh, lightly. Give examples of some of these issues uh, that I caught in that exist within it. For instance, what do you think would be an issue that would actually impact the lives of people and which... What is... should be our focus now yes. and it's not? Mm. You see, for, uh, the first focus now is that first is production of food. You know, people must have food. Mm. So if you can't feed yourself and even our answers, our, our, our forefathers and so on, their focus was on food. If you look in the normal animal kingdom, any animal, once it wakes up in the morning, the only thing they are looking for is food first. Yeah. There's nothing else. It's food. Even when the, your chicken comes out of the house in the morning, the first thing they are looking for is food. Mm. <laughs> so as a country, the first thing we must focus on is production of food so that we are self-reliant. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do that, we have to put more finance and more capacity in uh, agriculture. But if you look at the budgets we, pro we, we come out with every year, yeah. those budgets don't put emphasis on agriculture. You, more money is put on security and uh, other, 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 uh, other areas where you find that, you know, there is no production. Money is not put in a production system. Mm. It is put in, in consumption. So we have ended up being more of a, 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 a country that is consuming but not producing. Do these conversations happen when you meet with your colleagues at the Council of Governor? For example, as you're preparing for next week's devolution conference, are these conversations the focus of governors as they seek re-election, as they exit from office? Is this, has it trickled down to that level? This is the, that's where we are striving to be, uh, so that we can focus on agriculture. And I think one of the biggest problems as council of governors uh, we have been tackling with is having more resources coming to the, to, the, to the ground, to the county. For example, agriculture, which is the mainstay of our economy, of our people, more money is retained in the Ministry of Agriculture in Nairobi. Yep. And it's not brought down. 
So you find that most of the money that is retained in Nairobi in agriculture is only used for conferences and meetings and <laughs> writing policy papers, which they people keep on repeating. What are, when I read the, uh, our policy papers on West be it in agriculture industry and so on, these are the same papers that were written in early seventies and eighties. People are just regurgitating and re recycling the same. But in terms of implementation. So, if you look at uh, 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 if you look at the amount of money that is allocated by governors to agriculture, can we say that there is focus on on no, food the production? Money that comes, the money that comes down is not adequate enough to allocate a significant amount of money to agriculture, so that we can focus on agriculture as a, an, ag, a, an as a business. You see. Uh, as unless we make agriculture as a business, we can never get the youth down. And that's now why you find most youth will never, will never want to, to be on the ground to do agriculture because the type of agriculture we are doing is actually subsistence agriculture. Mm. It's agriculture just growing what you want to eat. But we need to make agriculture and, and a business, as a business. And therefore, we must be able to uh, introduce new technologies on how to do how to uh, to practice agriculture as a business, and this is where we need more resources. But these resources, as I'm talking now, most of them are held at the national level. You imagine we only get let's say 15 percent of the, our national uh, budget, but 85 percent remains at the national level. Mm. But most of the work, most of the key uh, key uh, areas, social areas that are of interest, is agriculture and health, they are all devolved. So you find most of the money that should come down, yep. it's held at national level. For example, health, more than 80% of the money for health is held at the national level. But the, all the functions of health are, are done at the county level, at the world level. Mm. So you find, that's why you find some of our health facilities don't have the right uh, medicine, right equipment, because there's no money, but the money is held at the headquarters. So we need more. That's why some of us, uh, Rio, uh, supported you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the increase of money uh, from, from the national government to the counties uh, during the when we wanted to change the constitution. Governor, we want to invite you when you're next in Nairobi, come to the studio. Let's have these conversations, especially on what needs to be done to make sure that people are receiving the services that they deserve at the county level. And we thank you very much for joining us today. Governor Wilbur Otichilo is the governor of Vihiga County, but he's been talking to us on matters of climate and climate change and the impact of climate change on our counties. This is a focus that's going to be of the devolution conference that takes place next week in Makueni County. Asante Sana, Governor, for joining us. Asante Sana, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.